Well, as y'all know, um, our pastors, uh, pastor, he'll be back in the pulpit on Sunday. He's up at a pastors and leaders conference being poured into. And that's, that's a blessing, you know. That's a blessing for our man of God to continue effortlessly to seek the word of God. So we just want to keep them lifted up. Um, they'll be back on Sunday. And y'all just continue to look to pray for them, pray for the church. Um, God is doing a great thing in the lives of his people. And um, I just thank him. Um, so at this time, if y'all go ahead and uh, greet your neighbors. <laughs> to our, our Wednesday Acceleration Service. Welcome to everybody who's joining us on our church. Um, I think God is going to do an amazing thing here tonight. Um, I learned a long time ago <laughs> that the Word of God is for the people. It's not for the vessel. It's, it's, it's for the people. And sometimes, um, you know, we can look at the vessel and say, oh, man, that ain't, oh, man, such, such. But God is going to speak to his people. And I just pray that you have your necks outstretched and you are expecting to hear from the word of God. I need y'all to be expecting to hear from the word of God because the pool has to be there for it to come out of me, you know. I <laughs> you know, if there's no outstretched neck, <laughs> you know, y'all, y'all got to draw that anointing. So we're going to talk about some, some good things uh, tonight. Uh, first of all, I, got th I have to give honor where honor is due. Um, I have to honor my pastors, Derek and Zephyr Reigns, uh, for trusting me to come out here and bless you all tonight. Um, you know, I don't take it lightly. It is definitely an honor for them to have faith that um, God is doing a work in my life uh, to be able to come out here and minister to y'all. So. I, I love y'all. Um, if y'all watch this or hear this, I love y'all, and I thank y'all <coughs> for everything you do for me and my family. I want to give an uh, honor to my wife. Um, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, you know, she's, uh, she's very encouraging. I was, I was telling this, uh, a friend of mine this morning, I was like, man, I was up, you know, finishing the word this morning, and I hadn't been up for a minute, so... I'm thinking like when she come out the room after she got dressed, she'll go come and try to console me. Are you okay? Is, how, how's, it, how's it going? Do you, do you feel like you ready? And, you know, uh, and everything like that. Because, you know, the, the why is kind of like our backbone. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm thinking that she's going to come sit on my lap or something, put her arm around me and say, how's it going? You go do good. Are you all right? This girl come out the room. <laughs> Had nothing to do with the word. She come show me a football schedule. <laughs> and I'm like, so she, she, so she finished getting ready and grabbed all her stuff and get ready to walk out the house. And she just said, you know, I look forward to what you're going to talk about tonight. I'm like, man, you, <laughs> you, you, you're not even going to ask me, how's it going? Are you okay? How you feeling? It's, oh, I look forward to what you And then say a word about it. But, <laughs> you know, but that's God's goodness, you know. That's God's goodness. She's a woman of faith, um, so I give an honor to her. Uh, and I give an honor to all y'all <laughs> for supporting me and giving me that warm welcome when I walked out. Thank you for that. All right, so we're going to pick up. We're just going to kind of flow with what Pastor has been talking about. You know, I, I, I don't want to definitely try to add nothing to what he's talking about. 
or even attempt to take anything away. I just kind of want to be in sync with, with what our man of God is talking about. And he's talking about happy life, um, you know, the happy, the happy life of the happy Christian. And um, this is, is very important that we understand that about happiness and about being happy is that because God wants us to be happy. You know what I'm saying? Our impact in the world, our impact in the community, our impact in our homes, our impact in relationships, in our families, our impact is, is, is greater when we're happy. When we're happy. And man, with, with all we got, you know, we have to strive to get happiness. Not our own happiness. <laughs> Not, like you said, circumstantial happiness. Uh, but that happiness that God ordained for us to have. So the, the, the title of my message is uh, The Foundation of Happiness. So we're going to talk about the foundation of happiness. If you would, please uh, turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Ch turn to Proverbs chapter 3. And while y'all turn out, I want to say this. Happiness that is anchored in God is the foundation of happiness for mankind. <laughs> So the foundation of our happiness is happiness that is anchored in God. And that's what we're going to learn about tonight, happiness and how to generate that happiness that is anchored in God. Um, happiness is generated by God's word, by his wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 3, this is a familiar scripture. <laughs> this is what our pastor been teaching us on. It says, happy is. Happy is. That's a big is. <laughs> that's a that's a that is is like the, the state of, you know, the condition of happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that get understanding. <laughs> so if we're going to have happiness. Uh, happiness is generated by God's word or by his wisdom. And it's also generated by his goodness in our life. So what is happiness? Pastor gave us a definition last week. He said happiness is a feeling of pleasure and contentment that generates a merriness. <laughs> it says happiness is a feeling of pleasure and contentment that generates a merriness. <laughs> merriness. It generates a merriness within us. So though God is the foundation of our happiness, it would take some work from us to generate happiness in our life. Now, this is not try harder Christianity. <laughs> this is not work based pursuit. It's just simply gaining an understanding of who we are <laughs> and what triggers our joy allergies, like Pastor was talking about uh, last week. <laughs> joy allergies. My goodness. <laughs> joy allergies. Wow. But he said, he said, <laughs> Uh, it's about it's simply gaining an understanding of who we are and what triggers our joy all allergies and pursuing the word to combat those triggers. We have to pursue the word to combat those triggers that trigger our joy allergies. Why? Because if we don't deal with our joy allergies, like he said, we'll just be all over the place with our happiness. <laughs> you know, our happiness will be circumstantial. At all times, <laughs> because anything that comes and rattle our joy, we'll just let it have its way. If we don't find if we don't pursue the word of God to gain scriptures, to gain the understanding of those triggers and uh, get the word to combat those uh, joy allergies in our life. We won't know how to deal with them when they arise. So let's talk about happiness anchored in God. <laughs> happiness anchored in God. See, there is a steady and consistent and constant happiness that God has prepared for us all, not only in this life <laughs> or not only in the life to come, but also in this life now. And in order for us to experience it, there are some steps we have to take. So we, uh, sometimes, you know, we, we kind of look forward to what is going to be, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, the coming joy, 
you know, or if I can just uh, uh, get through this, or I can just get through these days, or I know when, it all, when it's all over, I, I, see, I see my king and everything like that. So sometimes we kind of just like float, you know, through this life now uh, and, and, and kind of be down and you know, uh, uh, not really trying to uh, uh, build that happiness that's anchored in God because we're looking at what's eternal, you know, because God did promise us eternal joy. And sometimes we just we just look we just look to see what we just we just wait on what's eternal. It's like, man, I, I'm just hey, you know, I'm gonna just get through this, man. This is a, t- a tough time in my life, you know. You know, all I know is if anything happens, you know, I I see peace, I have peace, anything like that. But God wants us to have happiness right now. <laughs> he wants us to have happiness not only in the life to come, but happiness right now. Why? So we can have an impact. <laughs> the happy Christian that has a impact in the lives of people, has an impact in their family, has an impact in their community, has an impact on their jobs. <laughs> My wife is a very impactful person. <laughs> She's a very impactful person. Very. Now, hey, I love my wife. You know, um, she is God's goodness in my life. Now, hey, it, it, it is some things that she do that, you know, rattles me now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I got some, I, I have, she ha, I have some joy allergies that involves her, and certain things that she do can trigger her, uh, those joy allergies, you know. <laughs> and one of the main joy allergies that I have <laughs> is that <laughs> I'm almost near nocturnal, meaning that I can, I can wake up early and be up all night long if I wanted to. Sometimes I have to make myself go to sleep or she has to make me go to sleep, you know. But, and I be wanting to hang out. But, oh, miss, missus, fall asleep quick. <laughs> and, you know, you know, you can... <laughs> You could be coming home from work, and you could be all excited. Okay, I'm going to hang out. We're going to hang out. We're going to watch a movie. She's like, yeah, it's movie night, this and that, date night. We're going to chill out. We're going to hang out, watch us a movie and everything like that. And Man, it's 8, 4 to 5, 9, 9 o'clock. I mean, literally, her, 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 her average. <laughs> her average has to be between 9 and 9.30. That's by her average, like. And, and it, it don't take long. One person says she got that push button sleep. You just push a button and she just, <laughs> she just gone. So sometimes that used to, man, let me get, let me get to the message. But I love, I love her, you know. She, she is the, back, the backbone of our family. So like I said, if we're going to experience this happiness that's anchored in God, it's going to take some steps. And we're going to move uh, real swift because I see I only got four to five minutes left. <laughs> Uh, but it's going to take we're going to it's going to take us some steps. And the first step that we have to take in, 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 in having happiness that's anchored in God, that's going to generate that foundation of happiness in our life is that we have a we have to have a revelation that God loves us. Now, this is peeling back to the previous series that Pastor was talking about. We have to have a revelation that God loves us. If we're going to be happy, <laughs> we have to first have a revelation of God's love for us if we're going to ha- ha- have happiness that's anchored in God. Uh, we know the familiar scripture. We ain't got to turn there because we, we all know about heart. But it says, for God, John three sixteen, it says, for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I'm sorry. For God so loved the world that he gave. That's what I missed. Everybody was just going right along with me. Just go let me go right off the cliff. They're like, yes, yeah, 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 you know. My goodness. But, yeah, I'm, I'm spinning. All right. For God so loved the world that he gave. There we go. His only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. <laughs> he say, he so loved us that he gave. Now, we <laughs> there is no greater 
expression of love than somebody to sacrifice the most precious person to them. <laughs> he said he loved us that much. Can you, can you imagine sacrificing? I mean, this sometimes we, we don't heard this scripture so much <laughs> that it started to go over our head. You know, and man, it's so much in this scripture. It is so much in this scripture because of what God gave for us. <laughs> and there is no greater love that can be displayed than a life for a life. How you go, how, how you go top that? Yeah, people don't sacrifice cars for somebody. Sacrificed houses for somebody and gave a person a house and gave a person a car. And honestly, you ain't got to love that person to do that. It can just, <laughs> it can just be God told you to do it. It has no, it don't have to have no type of love attachment to it. <laughs> but when you give someone that is most precious to you, that has to have love. I cannot sacrifice my wife <laughs> for nobody else. I love everybody, but I don't love you that much. <laughs> nah, I could put my life on the line, but I can't, can't give that away. And second to her is my kids. I love everybody, but I don't love you that much. But God do. <laughs> God does. So we have to get a revelation of God's love for us if we're going to have happiness that's anchored in God. <laughs> he loves us and he wants us to be happy. <laughs> the default love of God is that all men should be saved. Let's please turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. Can you please turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. And it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his pro promise. Please forgive me if I'm moving fast. I'm trying to I'm going against the clock. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. Now, but that all should come to repentance. There's that word perish again. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever whoso believed in him should not perish. He said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, <laughs> but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. Now, when you think about the word perish, in the concordance it means to destroy, or to kill, or to lose. Uh, something like especially a life. And happiness is not perishing. If we are perishing, we're not happy. <laughs> there is no joy in perishing. There is no happiness in perishing. There is no gladness in perishing. And he said it's not his will that any man should perish. That's talking about the life now and the life to come. <laughs> I, God gave me a revelation of that. That's why I say this, John 3.16, that, that's... That's why, it's the, that's why it's the best scripture in the Bible. It's, it's the most known scripture in the Bible. And like I said, it is so common. We, we have got so familiar with that scripture. Like I said, it just sometimes just goes right over our head. And we miss out on the, the real meaning of it and everything that it's saying. You know, because, man, it, it almost can seem like, oh, he's just talking about when we die, we got eternal life. No, 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 no. 
He said, it's not his will that any man should perish. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have not only eternal life, but everlasting life. Everlasting. Everlasting. I can't think that it everlasting start when I die. No, everlasting starts now. <laughs> and if we're going to have happiness that's anchored in God, that's going to create a foundation of happiness in our life, we have to have a revelation that God loves us. Second step. Second step. We have to know that it is God's will that we rejoice and be glad. <laughs> Man. We have to know that it's God's will that we rejoice and be glad. It is God's will that we rejoice and be glad. It is God's will that we rejoice and be glad. Y'all know a scripture I'm turning to. Can y'all please turn to Psalm 118? I tell this story, but I got to say it because somebody probably questioned it. Like, why are you saying, can y'all please turn to Psalm 118? My wife. <laughs> Jeff, when you uh, when you stand up ministering the word, you sound so demanding. Turn to such and such, turn to not turn to such and such. She said you need to start asking people. <laughs> <laughs> she said you just sound so demanding, you know. And and and, and <laughs> I'm like for real. She was like yes, cause see sometimes my voice is deep and it it projects so. Uh, I don't, sometimes I could be yelling and don't even know it, you know, and, 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 and she'll get me correct. If, if, if my voice starts to raise, she'll be like, first of all, lower your voice. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm not yelling. She said, you is yelling. <laughs> and then I really have to try to start with like, like well, what I was saying was, so I don't, I don't be knowing that. So sometimes like when I do talk, it could. It could probably come off as a little bit demanding, you know. So she was like, so that's why I say, can you please turn to the scripture? So in verse 24, it says, in verse 24, it says, This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad therein. it. In order for us to pursue happy, to be happy, we have to understand that it is God's will for us to be happy. Now, what is this day? What is today? It's whatever day you choose. It's whatever day you choose. Now, you can choose certain days, just seven days a week. You could choose Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that you're going to decide to rejoice and be glad in. There go your circumstantial happiness. Praise God. <laughs> be blessed with it. And we know that's only temporary. But this psalmist, <laughs> this psalmist, he's, he chose every day. See, it's up to me to choose which day I'm going to consider a day that the Lord has made. And it's up to me if I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it or delight in it. I can wake up and declare it every day as a day that the Lord has made. Or I can sometime it. <laughs> I can sometime, I can wake up on Monday and say, you know what? This is the day that the Lord has made. I really rejoice and be glad they're in it. I can sing the song. I can quote scripture. I can go to work uh, uh, perky, happy, greeting everybody. Man, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I can be all that Monday. And Tuesday, say, I ain't, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> And guess what? <laughs> it's up to me to make that choice. So this day by the psalmist, has had, he, he had already set the tone for the day. He declared it as a day that the God has made. Therefore, what happens? The day belonged to God. He said, man, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is God's day. God, this day belongs to God. God knows my beginning. He knows my end. He knew that when I came in to work, that person would go cuss me out on the phone. He knew that. <laughs> He knew that when my son came home from school, he was going to tell me he got suspended because he was acting up in class. Now, he didn't get suspended. I'm just an example. But he knew that. <laughs> he knew that. The day belonged to God. And because he knew that that day belonged to God, he declared how he was going to approach it. He said, this day belonged to God, so guess what? 
I'm going to rejoice, and I'm going to be glad there in it. <laughs> so when we believe that first, God loves us, <laughs> and then second, each day belongs to him, then no matter what, we should be rejoicing and being glad in it. Notice the should be. We should be. <laughs> we should be. Because, because if I've already said, God, you own this day, and God, you love me, <laughs> then I should be rejoicing because I must know that if he loves me and this day belongs to him, he's going to make everything go right for me in that day. It's like, okay, we are, we, okay, so as a parent, do I want happy for my kids? I definitely do. That's part of my love for them. I want them to be happy. <laughs> so whatever I can do, whatever I can intercept that is not under their control, whatever I can give them or whatever that's going to create a foundation of happiness in their life, guess what? I'm compelled to do it. And now we have the God of heaven and earth. <laughs> We've already declared that this is a day that, the God, that God has made and he loves me, this day belongs to God, man, I rejoice and be glad there in it. I rejoice and be glad there in it. When God is at the forefront of our life, we take on life for what it is, and we rejoice with confidence, knowing that we have the God of heaven working on our behalf. Amen. But when he is not at the forefront, life circumstances can create a heaviness, and that heaviness begins to steal our happiness. It's, it's up to us. It's up to us. What are we going to choose? <laughs> so first, we have to have a revelation that God loves us. Second, we have to know that it is, it is his will that we rejoice and be glad. We have to know these, these things if we're going to have happiness that's anchored in God. That's going to create and generate a foundation of happiness in our life talking about the happy life. I don't know where pastor be getting these series from. Series from. I mean. <laughs> and I, you know how I know that this and I, I'm trying not to chase a rabbit here but I gotta see it. You know how I know that this <laughs> this brook is for me. Because the word pricks. It pricks. It pricks. <laughs> it pricks. And in that pricking, I'm compelled to go further. I am challenged by the word of God that is coming out of this ministry. Sometimes I don't like it. <laughs> but um, it keeps me keeps me focused. It lets me know <laughs> you haven't arrived yet. <laughs> so keep working at it. <laughs> so the third step, if we're going to see happiness, if we're going to have happiness that's anchored in God, that's going to generate a foundation of happiness in our life, we have to see, and I have this in parentheses, seeing and believing to see God's goodness in our life. We have to see God's goodness. Why I say see? Because sometimes we could be murmuring, complaining, moping around, thinking that woe is me and all that stuff. And we, everything, things are so cluttered that we can't even see really how good God is being. <laughs> Man, I see, I, I I have to tell myself, Jeff, you're still here. You know, there's still an opportunity to course correct. You know, if God before you, who can be against you? Sometimes I have to look at, you know, those three people in my house and say, man, if all else fails, I got them, man, God is good. Amen. You know, God's, God's goodness is always manifested 
in our life. Always. So we have to see and believe to see his goodness in our life. We all know the popular term, God is good, all the time and all the time, God is good. Now, we can't say that <laughs> and not believe it. Sometimes it's on autopilot. Hey, man, how you doing, man? God is good. And you got turmoil going on. But you got to believe that. You got to believe that. You got to believe that. Man, I see so much goodness in this church and people in this church. I see so much progression. It can... <laughs> Man, God is good. I see so much progression in the lives of people in this church. You know. And this lets me know just how real and just how good God is. It's hard for us as believers to be happy when we, we, when we don't have an expectation that God is good and that he will continue being good to us. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you don't have an expectation that God is going to be good to you the rest of this evening, tomorrow, and the next day, and the day after that, and the days after that, and the week after that, and the weeks after that, and the month after that, and the months after that, and the year after that, and the years after that, it's it's hard for you to experience happiness. I ain't even introduced myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Jeffrey Sims, uh, and I'm a member of the church. I'm not, because I, <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows, but my name is Jeffrey Sims, and I'm a member of the church. Um, <laughs> Um, so, but, um, reason what, what, just a quick little backlog. A lot of people know a little, somewhat about me. I did, made some decisions in life that wasn't always the best decisions. And it, 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 it cost me, you know, suffered some consequences behind my decisions. You know, you know, got into a little trouble and, you know, had to do a, do a little time for it, you know. But I think one thing that kept me pursuing, kept me striving, <laughs> is the expectation of good that I believe that God was going to give me. You know why? Because <laughs> I knew his love, his, his love had got revealed to me in a way. I mean, the peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of my trials and all this stuff, just that overwhelming peace and overwhelming joy that would come over me that I would have in the midst of all that stuff had revealed to me how much God loved me. And I, I, I feel like there's a scripture that says that when I get you into my hands, then nobody's able to pluck, them, pluck you out. I feel like through that endurance of those things and witnessing the power of God and his staying power, in my life, through those circumstances, through those trials and everything like that, I believe he had been revealed to me, and at that point, I became unpluckable. <laughs> and now, the expectation that God is going to be good to me is high. <laughs> it's high. And that expectation has followed me from the time I left where I was <laughs> doing my little thing yet up to this point. And it continues to lead me. So it's hard for us to believe, hard for us to 
as believers to be happy when we don't have that expectation. You got to have a, you have to have an expectation that God is going to be good. There's a correlation between God's goodness in the lives of the believer and the happiness that it generates. Can you please turn to Psalm 27, Psalm chapter 27, and media? I'm I'm going to need this in the amplifier, not right now, um, but I, I'll let you know. Psalms chapter 27. Talking about the foundation of happiness, the happy life. Happiness that is anchored in God. Well, we have to believe that God is going to be good to us. Now, this was my, this was my victory scripture. <laughs> this was my stand on, lean on, sit on, lay on scripture. Because it was so true. It was so true about me. Verse 13, it says, I had fainted. <laughs> I had fainted. Boy, this was so true about me. It says, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of of the living not the goodness of the Lord when I die <laughs> he says the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living so we have to have an expectation that God is going to be good to us now in this time <laughs> in the land of the living it says wait on the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait I say on the Lord now, this word believe, it says to be nurtured or cared for, to be faithful, to be trustworthy, to be established, have confidence. And I like the Hebrew uh, uh, name of it. It's, it's, it says, it, it looks like amen, because <laughs> it's A-M-A-N. It could be amen, I, you know, but I thought it was just so cool because when I went to look it up, I feel like God winked at me when he, like, he said, like, hey, man, okay. <laughs> Felt like, okay, you, you own to something. But, yeah, it says, hey, man, to be nurtured, cared for. So it's like I try to plug that in. It says, I have fainted unless I cared for the goodness or uh, cared for to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Or I was established to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Or I had confidence to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, this wait, this word wait, it means kawa. Kawa. In the Hebrew, it means kawa, Q-A-W-A. And that means to hope for, to wait for, to look for. So to hope for, to wait for, to look for. There is first a hope that God will move on my behalf. <laughs> And then that hope, I am waiting on God to move. And while I'm waiting, I'm looking for him. <laughs> See, I'm not just waiting, 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 waiting. No word, no prayer, no praise, no nothing. As I'm waiting, I am constantly looking for him. And where else? Where, 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 where is the best place that we can look for God at? In the word. <laughs> In the word. <laughs> In the word. See, when it comes to seeing God's goodness in our life that would generate happiness, posture in the word and pursuit after the word is a big thing. Now, like I said, now, this is not try harder Christianity, or work based uh, pursuits. I'm not, you know. But <laughs> we. We have to get into this thing. <laughs> we have to get into this thing to see to look for God, to move on our behalf. God is good to everybody. <laughs> However, outside of the fault love of God that he desires for us to have, to be saved and provide our every need, there is a goodness that God has set aside for those who have believed to see his goodness and waited on him. God brings us victory. <laughs> God brings us victory. God's goodness in our life is both tangible and intangible. 
and both are at work in our lives to generate happiness. So when I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I'm believing to see God's goodness tangibly and intangibly. So let's, let's look at some, some, um, some tangible goodnesses that generates happiness. Now, this is more circumstantial, <laughs> but it is tangible goodness. We can attach, attach it to the goodness of the Lord. Family. That can be, you know, tangible goodness that, that generates happiness, you know. Family. You know, a house. <laughs> You know, the God deal house is like, man, I was believing in God for this house. And, man, he caused this thing to come through when it looked like it wasn't going to work out. Man, that's it's God being good. Now, like I said, it's, 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 this, is just, this is just circumstantial, but it's, it's, it's part of God's goodness. A career, that career that you've been believing God for, wealth, you know, key and covenant friendships and relationships. A flourishing business <laughs> when God is prospering you. You know, God is causing things to go, your, go, go well for you. He's favoring you. These are all tangible goodnesses. And these do generate happiness in our life, yes. you know. Some examples of intangible goodness. What is not seen that generates happiness, peace, yes. <laughs> joy, strength, confidence, Temperance, that self-control, patience, patience. When you're standing in Walmart and you about the 16th person in line, because they got two lines, they got, <laughs> they got about 75 people in line and two people at the register. They done closed down all the express lanes. Well, you can have some patience in that. That's, that can definitely generate some happiness in your life. I was in Walmart one night on the north side. It's about midnight. And I'm looking around. I'm like, what in the world is all these people doing in Walmart? It wasn't Black Friday. It wasn't no special. It was just a regular night. And I, I'm not kidding you. It had to be 100 people in line. <laughs> Two lanes open. <laughs> that night, I needed some patience. <laughs> but hope, love, courage. These are all intangible goodnesses of God. Tangible goodness is more circumstantial happiness, while intangible goodness has more of a root of happiness that can continue to gain depth, making the happiness more permanent and consistent. So as we look into the law of God, as we, as we, as we uh, 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 believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living by looking for God to move on our behalf as we wait for him to move on our behalf. We begin to um, uh, 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 drive the root of the intangible goodness because as we looking into the law of God, we, this, is, this is what's happening to us, this intangible goodness, this stuff that people can't see. You know, we're getting more peace in God. We're getting more joy in God. We're getting more strong in God. We're getting more confidence in God. We're getting more temperate in the things of God. We're having more patience. We're walking in more hope. We're walking in more love. We're walking in more courage. All these things get built up in us as we look into the word of God. Can y'all please turn to Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 20. <laughs> it says, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep the word and guard it with all diligence, for out of it, are the issues of life. See, there's a process to me seeing the goodness of the Lord and pursuing the word to deal with my own personal issues of what? Depression, of what? Insecurity, of what? 
anger, of what? Addiction, of what? Abandonment, of fear, etc. <laughs> Part of that process of me believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living is me looking into the word to deal with these issues. <laughs> It's me looking into the word to deal with these issues. There's one scripture that says heaviness is in Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs chapter 12, it says heaviness in the heart maketh it stoop. <laughs> but a good word maketh it glad. <laughs> maketh it glad. So all these things, anger, insecurity, addiction, abandonment, fear, stress, lust, etc. These create heaviness in the heart of believer because within the spirit of, of the believer, there's this constant reaching for holiness and purity and truth. Like, uh, like, like the scripture says in Romans, it says the whole creation grown together in pain until now. It's like, it's like man, there, there is a redemption that we so yearn to have. <laughs> So, so in our reaching for this, not, not, not just our individual effort, but our spirit, our, our, our soul reaches for holiness. It reaches for purity. It reaches for truth. And when we are dealing with, in the midst of that reaching, when we are dealing with anger, insecurity, addiction, abandonment, fear, we don't want none of that stuff in us. <laughs> this begins to create a heaviness in us. <laughs> this is why. We must posture ourselves under the word and pursue the word of God for our life. Because when the word is dominant in us, it creates gladness. <laughs> it creates joy. <laughs> it creates happiness. It creates delight. <laughs> and we can have more of an impact in our family, in our community, <laughs> on our jobs, you know, in our ministries or in this ministry, or in ministry, in serving, in volunteering, in, in, in interactions in the grocery store. <laughs> like I said, when you're standing in that line, you know, and you got a buggy full of stuff, and you so upset, it's, it's a person behind you got one item, and you done cast off all temperance, all long-suffering, and you got 60 items that you got to ring up. And you won't say, you know what, you can go ahead. <laughs> All right. Let's turn to, can we please turn to John chapter 15. <sighs> I see the intangible goodness of the Lord as the fruit of happiness. Man. That intangible goodness of God, it's just that peace, that joy, that love, that courage, that strength, that confidence, that boldness. That's, that's like the, the fruit of happiness. Uh, chapter 15, uh, John chapter 15, verse 1. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I know this is going to be talking about fruit, but I'm going to plug happiness into this. It says, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not happiness, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth happiness, he purgeth that it may bring forth more happiness. <laughs> now, you are clean through the word which I have spoken <laughs> to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear happiness <laughs> of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I am him. The same bring forth much happiness. <laughs> For without me, you can do nothing. If a, man, if a man abide not in me, he has cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein, and my, herein is my Father glorified, glorified that you bear much happiness. So shall you be my disciples. I want happy Christians. <laughs> he do. He do. Now, uh, uh, this is a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a definite pursuit, you know. It's, it's a definite pursuit, you know. Um, happiness is a definite pursuit. 
it's just this one of those things that you just continue to work on. You just continue to strive after. You just continue to, to build. You get into the, the word of God and let it just, just, just continue to build in you. Keep going. It says, as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that you, that my joy or happiness might remain in you, and that your joy or happiness might be full. <laughs> Through my pursuit after the word of God to deal with my own personal issues, the intangibles of the goodness of the Lord become my constant and steady disposition. As I pursue the word of God, <laughs> as I look into the word of God, the intangible goodness of God become my steady and constant dif disposition. It's, hey, God is good. Yeah, bless me with this. He, yeah, he blessed me with this. He blessed me with a good wife. He blessed me with this. Yeah, he, that's, 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 that's definitely his goodness. <laughs> but the main focus is, is his intangible goodness. Because, yeah, that house, nice house, new house. Oh, I'm happy. Man, circumstantial though. Because mm -hmm. I'm happy when I first bought it. Now, now here, here it is. Here it is. You have pockets that you will go back and relive that happiness because it'll, it'll hit you. Man, I got a house. I can do whatever I want to to this house. And so your happiness rise back again. But it done took a three-month hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, brand new car, happy. <laughs> My, bought my truck a couple of years ago. I was happy to get that truck. Then sad at the same time a couple of days later. Small, very small thing. Bought the truck. Okay, first day I bought the truck. Hmm, vroom, vroom. Came home, pulled up in the driveway. Had a, a social club, a, a, a Christian hip-hop group playing. Uh, I, 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 I rolled up pumping it. My son ran out. Daddy, you got a new truck. I, oh, yeah, I got a new truck. Lifted him up and threw him up in that. What? Happy. Circumstantial. <laughs> For the moment. Turned around a couple of days later. Now I'm still happy with my truck. <laughs> but turned around, didn't even notice it. I, looking for the CD player. I say, this thing, this thing don't even have a CD player. <laughs> I'm trying to, and the man, I, it, I don't have CDs that I listen to. I, I like to listen to like the word and stuff. Like if I'm going to work because when, I, when you try to do it on your phone, you lose your place. If you cut your phone off, you got to start all over. So, you know, one of the main things I like to the CD player for is I can leave and put the word in. If it cut off, it'll just pick up where it left, uh, left off. I say, man, this thing don't even have a CD player. <laughs> that instantly rivaled my happiness with that truck. <laughs> but no, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. That, that big boy ride, smooth, good. Only thing I'm mad about, I put a lot of miles on it. So the so first step to see God's goodness, to see, to see happiness that's anchored in God, is we have to have a revelation of God's love for us. Second step, we have to know that it is his will that we rejoice and be glad. Uh, and third step, we have to believe to see the goodness of the Lord in our life. The fourth step, <laughs> what our pastor been talking about, we have to find wisdom and get understanding from his word. Going back to Proverbs chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 13. It says, once again, happy is, and media, I'm going to need this, please. Uh, I know I said it about the last Christmas, but I'm definitely going to need this one. Verse 13 and 14 in the Amplified, if y'all can have it ready for me here in a second. Um, but it says, um, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. See, there is an obvious manifestation of God's goodness in our life. When we find wisdom and when we get understanding. Maybe you got the amplified version. It says, happy, blessed, fortunate, 
and Envio. Now, oh, so that's the Amplified Classic. Hmm. Okay, so my Amplified says, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, no. It says, blessed, happy, parentheses, blessed, considered, fortunate, and to be admired. It says, blessed, considered, fortunate, and to be admired is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. There is a obvious manifestation of God's goodness in our life when we find wisdom and we get understanding. Why? Because that thing said it's con- you are considered to be fortunate. How does <laughs> it says considered to be fortunate. Considered to be fortunate. If how can I consider somebody to be fortunate? It's by what I see. <laughs> how can I see or uh, say somebody is blessed? It's by what by what I see. How can I admire somebody? It's by what I see. And when we find wisdom and get understanding, it's obvious. <laughs> the God, God's goodness in our life, it's obvious. The more happiness I'm able to generate on my own, the more the positive experience I can pass on. And as I seek the wisdom of God and get understanding of who I am in God, the more happiness I am able to generate. In order to find happiness in life situation, we must mine the gold of the wisdom of God out of the word of God that will show us how to deal with the ups and downs this life brings. We got to mine (laughs) the gold of the wisdom of God out of the word of God that will show us how to deal with the ups and downs that this life brings. Simply meaning, (laughs) what is the word? What is the word concerning that issue? (laughs) <laughs> what the word says has to say about your anger. What the word has to say about your uh, uh, resentment. What the word has to say about your uh, uh, bitterness. <laughs> what does the word have to say about it? There's an old Apple commercial. When iPhone, they, they, they sold, mi- they, this is how they became popular. You know, the introduction of apps. Need to buy pizza. We have an app for that. Oh, you need to pick up your clothes from the dry cleaners? We have an app for that. You need to find your closest Starbucks? (laughs) We have an app for that. Same thing with the word. (laughs) You got resentment? Oh, we got the word for that. (laughs) You got anger? Oh, there's a word for that. You got bitterness? Oh, there's a word for that. So in order to find happiness, (laughs) we must mine the gold of the wisdom of God out of this word that will show us how to deal with these ups and downs that this life brings. 50 seconds. Come on, close it. (laughs) Mining the wisdom of God out of the word of God places, places in us a preparation to respond in life in a way that keeps the joy of the Lord consistent in us, even in seemingly the toughest times of life. As the word become a part of me, happiness is becoming a part of me. Therefore, the more the word becomes a part of me, the more happiness becomes a part of me. So with this, what must I ask myself? Well, if the word becomes all of me, then happiness becomes all of me. (laughs) The ability to identify the triggers... (laughs) Like I say, those joy allergies that comes to steal our joy and interrupt our life flow. That ability is fueled by the wisdom that we mine out of, the, out of God's word. <laughs> it's fueled by it. It's fueled by it. God and his infinite wisdom and goodness and love for us reveals to us the issues that we have in life that robs us of our joy so that we may look into the perfect law of liberty and find wisdom on how to deal with. With those things that his joy, so that, uh, so that his joy may remain in us. I have one last scripture that I have to read, not because I, uh, I got to read this real fast and got to close. Psalm 119, can you please quickly turn to Psalm 119. This is the last scripture and the last thought. Verse 
verse 105. And it says, The word is a lamp unto my feet <laughs> and a light unto my path. The word is a lamp. Thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The wisdom that I constantly and consistently mine out of the word of God illuminates to me the condition of my soul and how it is affected both positively and negatively. This calls me to know what makes me happy and what don't and helps me to offset the onset of unhappiness by not allowing my joy allergies to attach themselves to me in a way that, re what that reward me of happiness. I have to close right there. So in review, it's really a fifth step. In the last step, Pastor touched on this, and I'm pretty sure he's going to come back to it, but we have to label the rest in God. That was the last step. But um, So there's, there's steps to our, our happiness that's anchored in God. The first step is that we have to have a revelation that, God's lo that God loves us. We have to have that revelation. The second step, we have to know that it is his will that we rejoice and be glad. The third step is that we have to see and, in parentheses, believe to see the goodness of the, of, of the Lord in the land of the living. So we have to see it now and believe to, to, believe to see it in the coming days. The fourth step is we, uh, we have to find wisdom and get understanding. And the fifth step is we have to label the rest. Well, y'all blessed by the word tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your word. All right, if I can get my prayer counselors in place. There's four things I want to offer to you. The first thing I want to offer to you, if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, I want the, alt the altar is open. You know, like I said, the first step for us experiencing happiness is having a revelation that God loves us. And like the Bible said, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And if we're going to experience any happiness in life, it has to begin with Jesus. <laughs> so if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to come up. If you want to rededicate your life back to God, I ask you to come up. And what's the rededication is twofold. It can be a sin that has caused a gap or a separation between you and God. And you just want to get it right. You know, I ask you to come up tonight. Or you just want to get closer to God. You know, the Bible says that God gives grace. He resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Sometimes we can come in with our mind made up to say, man, I don't care what's getting preached tonight. I had, I, it's something that I dealt with throughout the week. Or it's something that I was doing throughout the week. Come on down, brother. Uh, it, it, I'm going to come up. There, there has been times I've came up and rededicated my life. I didn't care what pastor was going to preach. It was made up in my mind before the word started. And we, never, we can't never worry about what, per, what a person can think because they don't know why we're coming up. We can be coming up for because of sin. Or, come on down, brother. Or we can be coming up because uh, I just want to get closer to God. <laughs> you know, I just want to get closer to God. I rededicated my life so much uh, early on. I was, I was coming up to the altar every service until I, I realized I don't got to keep coming up there. <laughs> Jesus, I, I, every, if I had a bad thought, I was coming to the altar. If I said something wrong, I was coming to the altar. So we can't never be ashamed about coming up to the altar. It's between you and God, you know, between you and God. I never let the eyes of man restrict me from pursuing God because of what they're going to think. Uh, what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> hey, I, you know, God has a lot to do with my soul, and I, I just want to be right with him. So if that's you, please come on down. The third thing, if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence and speaking in tongues, if you have never received that, I ask you to come on down. We've got a lot of people that's going to be able to pray with you for that. I know my Christian life went to the next level when I, got, when I received that gift. So if you want that gift, please come down. And fourth, uh, if, you, if, if, if something, if the babe in your womb leap, the babe in your womb leap, and you feel like this is the, the church God has called you to. If you have been here a couple of times and you haven't joined yet and you feel like, man, this is the night. 
uh, come on, you want to come on down and join the church, I ask you to come down. I've offered to you four things. Uh, first is uh, salvation, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, rededication, uh, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And if you want to join this church, come on down. Uh, those who are joining in on our church, there should be a number um, that you have, that we have down there on the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can call that number. We got people that's uh, waiting to pray on you. Um, if everybody's heart is peace, let's go ahead and pray over these, over these gentlemen that's up here. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for these men that have come. God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that everything that they're seeking, Father God, you give them. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in their life. May you bless them indeed. And I thank you, Lord, that from this day forth, oh God, you will, you will, you will blow their minds, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray over them and their family. Bless them, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Deacon Cheryl, if you can hold your hands up, y'all can follow that young lady. Y'all go ahead and, you know, clap it up for those gentlemen. And I'm going to go ahead and speak the benediction of everybody, if y'all can bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Lord, for the happiness that we have that is anchored in you. God, we trust in you, oh, Father God. We trust in your word, Father God, to continue, Lord, to anchor us in you. God, may you have your way in our lives. May you bless us and keep us, oh, Father God. May you continue, Lord, to provide for us, oh, God. We thank you for the blood of Christ, oh, Father God, and your goodness that is manifested in your life. Lord, we give you all of the glory, honor, and the praise, and we thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Thank y'all for coming out. Y'all go get your kids. Y'all be blessed. Pastors love y'all. They'll be back in the south on Sunday. Have a nice night. Thank you.